What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we did see some selling across the board and the question is what should you expect from here? So first up let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. Alright so today on SPY we were down 0.68% and we definitely see SPY starting to pull back after we hit that previous all-time high of resistance. Now this is completely normal price action because we did have a very impulsive bounce off of the lows and remember nothing goes up in a straight line forever. So you can call it a little bit of punishment for anybody chasing yesterday's price action but if you're looking at the price action it's still completely healthy. We have that very critical support level down here at 464 and we're only about two days away from getting the full bull trend if the price action can stay over critical support. Remember we do have a gap to fill and it's always possible we do fill these gaps but we have such strong support above the top of that gap that there's no guarantee we have to fill that gap. So watch that very critical support level at 464, which is completely normal if we test that level as support before we go any higher. Remember, if we hold this critical support and start to bounce, it's very likely we're going to break out to a new all-time high with that price target on 477 on a break back above about 470. If we break down below 464, you're looking for the next strong support levels at 462 and the full gap close right around 460.8. Below that, we have the final line of defense at our critical support level of the 50 EMA, which is going to be right around 458. So right now, I think it's more than likely SPY could retest that 20 simple moving average at 464. And because that level is such a strong support level and we're so close to having the full bull trend, I think we could see a bounce off of that and going into new all-time highs and that would take us to about the Santa Claus rally to end the year and that would be a bullish close for the S&P 500. So right now looking at this selling the first thing we have to ask ourselves is this selling on high volume? Absolutely not. Today's selling volume was absolutely pathetic and there was just no high volume selling so this is definitely a bullish pullback. When you see low volume selling after such a bullish pullback it actually turns into what's called the bull flag. I can show you very quickly on this one hour chart you can see the price action went up very impulsively and that is the flagpole and then you can see the price actions just going sideways which forms the flag. So this is a very common bullish pattern called a bull flag and if we break out of this bull flag to the upside it could be very impulsive and that's your break above 470. Obviously if we break out of the bull flag to the downside it would be a break below about 466 and then it's more likely we come back down to 464 possibly the gap close right around 460.8. So right now this is a very bullish looking one hour chart and you already know we have higher highs and higher lows in the one hour chart and we're knocking on the door of all time highs. So when you see low volume selling and you're seeing a bull flag it's very hard to think any other thoughts other than bullish thoughts and that's why I'm still incredibly bullish on the S&P 500. Once we get that full bull trend I'll have full confirmation that we're going back to new all-time highs and we're only about two days away from having that so very very soon we'll know if we're going back on the full bull or if we're going to continue to get rejected at this resistance and possibly see another higher low. Jumping over to the Nasdaq 100 triple Qs we had a lot more selling than the S&P 500 going down 1.47% and we did close below the 20 simple moving average so we're slightly below our critical support level which was at 395. We're not much lower than that and we did close right around the 5 EMA and the 13 EMA and those levels could still act as support. So don't rule out the possibility we're coming back to test this breakout level which is right around 392 and we still have the full gap close right around 388. That would still be a higher low if we did close that gap and then we could still bounce and form another higher high which could take us to new all time highs. So all of this price action is completely normal and it still looks completely healthy. There's nothing wrong with low volume selling and you can clearly see that even though the volume was higher than yesterday it's still lower than the other two bullish buying days where the volume was much higher. So when you see low volume selling and you're sitting right on top of critical support and you're only about two to three days away from getting a full bull trend it's really hard to be overly panicked by the selling. You can set your risk at any of these support levels and you can buy the dip wherever you feel comfortable but don't rule out the possibility that eventually this dip will be over and we're going to see another very quick impulse higher which will easily take us to new all time highs to finish out the year. So your critical support levels on the triple Qs are right around 392 and that full gap close at 388 and your 50 EMA is just a little bit lower right around 386 to 387. So we have a ton of support to still form higher lows before we can eventually bounce off of one of these support levels and attempt to break out to new all time highs. Continue to watch that volume and if you see high volume selling at any point 
instantly get a lot more defensive. On the Dow Jones, we were pretty flat on the day, going absolutely nowhere, and the Dow Jones did not get the memo that they were supposed to be selling today. We're still above all the critical support, and we're extremely close to having the full bull trend. We just need to see that 13 EMA getting back over the 20 simple moving average, and the Dow Jones is back into the full bull market. So if you use the Dow Jones as an indication of anything coming, it's definitely that the full bull market is literally right around the corner. We were flat today on very low volume, so we don't see any high volume selling in the Dow Jones, and we're still above all of our critical support levels. Critical support for the Dow is 356, 355, and 354, so you essentially have a critical support level $1 apart, so the bulls have full control with a ton of support to work with. Once that full bull trend comes back, look for the breakout of resistance at 359, and the new all-time high prices at 365 and 372. On the Russell 2000, we were down 2.26% today and we're back to that resistance trendline breakout level and we are testing that level as support, which is right around 220.5. We did close the gap below, so there's only one gap left and that gap doesn't fill until we get up to 228.5 and that will be a breakout level. So at this point, if the Russell 2000 can bounce off this support level and close that gap, that will be a bullish breakout because at this point in the timeline, that would be a breakout above our resistance trendline. So look for very strong resistance on the Russell 2000 right around 224, 226.7, and the full gap close at 228.5. If we can close that gap and break out, we could retest that gap as support, then bounce and try to get the ultimate bullish breakout, which is back above 232. Back above 232, we're back on the bull, we'll have the full bull trend, and we could see another new all-time high. So take it day by day and watch these critical support levels. If we see the Russell 2000 breaking back down below 220.5, you're looking for support at 217 and the most critical level of all at 213 because if we break below 213, we're more than likely seeing the Russell 2000 going into a full-blown bear market. You see selling on lower volume than the previous three days of buying, so overall this could still be a buy the dip off support. On the RK ETF, we had another bad day for Kathy Wood and at this point, I don't think Santa Claus is coming to visit her. This ETF is down over 5.3% today and starting to push on that gap below and that gap doesn't fill until we get back down to 95. Yes, that is still a higher low, but at this point, you can see it's a very strong downtrend and the bears are absolutely eating this ETF for lunch. So right now, we need to see that critical resistance breakout back above 103 and 107 to stop the bleeding in this ETF because it is absolutely bleeding out. If we start breaking back down below 95, look for support right around 91 to 90, and below that we're coming all the way down to 85. If we can break out above 103 and 107, that will stop the bleeding, but we eventually need to get all the way back up here above 119 to start going back into a bull cycle. So watch that gap fill at 95 as possible support, but if we break down through that level, we're more than likely coming back down to 90 or 85. On the VIX, we were up just about 8.5% today, and we see the VIX bouncing off the 50 EMA and getting rejected below the 20 simple moving average. And don't forget, we still have that gap up there at 26.75. We know that gap will get filled, we just don't know when. So watch that gap because if we go up there, that could be the next buy the dip opportunity. And if we continue to trend higher after we close that gap, we could see that full blown correction that we haven't yet seen this year. Right now, we're looking for the VIX to get back below 20 for the second day in a row to confirm the bull rally that we're going to brand new all time highs. If we can get back below 20, you're bullish. And if we break out back above 25 to 26, you need to get a lot more cautious yet again. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, so we need to watch the price action and be prepared for any scenario. On Bitcoin, we're currently down almost 5%, and it looks like Bitcoin is either going to try to make a stand at 47,000, or we are indeed coming back down to support at 44,000, or the low of the wick of support right around 42,000. Right now, you can see that Bitcoin is in the full bear trend, and the price action cannot break back above 53,000, so you need to stay cautious and possibly even bearish until Bitcoin could get back above 53,000. If we can't hold in the 40,000 supports, we could be coming back down to 39,000, and below that, it's going to be looking very ugly. We don't see high volume selling, but we definitely don't see a lot of buyers of the dip. So right now, it does look like Bitcoin could be coming back down to about 44 or 42,000. On Amazon, we were down just over 1.1% today, and we see Amazon continuing to get rejected at the 20 simple moving average of resistance and failing to break out. We need to see Amazon closing back above 35.30 and then breaking out of the resistance trendline at 35.60 to go back on the bull. Right now, we have very strong support right around 34.63, and if we can stay above that level, you could buy the dip because it's still a higher low. 
The critical support trend line is right around 3430 and below that you're looking for 3400 and if that level fails we're coming back down to 3311 or 3185. So look for that breakout above about 3530 to 3560 or the breakdown below about 3400. On Tesla stock we were down just over 6% today and we can definitely see a lot of selling in Tesla stock. We did close that gap below which is right around 1020 and we're sitting right on top of the most critical support level which is our 50 EMA which is that $1,000 support level. So this is the do or die for the Tesla bulls. If Tesla breaks down below 1,000, it should be a very quick trip down to close the gap, which is at 909. And if that level of support fails, we're going down to close the gap at 843. However, if we bounce off this level, you're still got a lot of work to do to get back over the 20 simple moving average at 1076. And then we need to get back over the median of the wedge breakdown, which was at 1145. If we can break out of those levels, we could close the gap at 1208 and test that critical resistance at 1240. And above that, we're looking for new all-time highs with a price target of 1400. But right now, it looks like the Tesla bears are winning. They just need to break down through the critical support at 1000, and they should have full control to the downside. So be cautious if you're a Tesla bull, because if you lose that support level, we're easily coming down to fill this gap, which is about another 9 to 10% drop. So be cautious on a break below support. Otherwise, you could buy the dip and try to get a trade off of this bounce. On Apple stock, we were down 0.3% today and we see Apple struggling to break out of that price target at 176. If we can get above that level, you have the next price target at 178. And if we can start breaking out above 178, it does look like Apple is going to try to get to $200. You can still see an extremely strong bull trend, so there's no reason to get bearish on the rest of the stock market when Apple is looking this strong. Remember that Apple literally moves the market and when Apple is looking this strong, you really shouldn't be getting overly bearish on the rest of the market. If we do start to see Apple pulling back, you're looking for support at 171 or the gap closes at 168. And below that, we have support at 166 and 162. So we have a ton of support to the downside, and I would not be surprised to see Apple trying to bull flag from here before we can go any higher. On the financial sector, we were down 0.2% today, and we did close back below the 50 EMA. And we're definitely seeing a lot of consolidation as these moving averages consolidate and start coming together to a point which means we should be seeing a big move in the financial sectors in either direction in the very near future. And don't forget, we do have a gap to fill to the upside. In the industrials, we were down 0.31% today, but the price action is still above all the moving averages and we're developing a bull trend. The healthcare sector was up 0.23% today. And as you can tell, the healthcare sector is breaking out and starting to go back into a bull cycle. We're only one day away from having the full bull trend, so it could be possible the healthcare sector is leading the market higher and we're about to see new all-time highs. The energy sector was down 0.77% today, but the price action is still above all the moving averages and we're only one day away from having the full bull trend, which means we could be breaking out of resistance and starting to run back to new 52-week highs. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this is definitely not the time to be getting bearish. We're developing full bull trends in the very near future, only about two to three days away, and we're still sitting above critical support, and we're seeing some of the sectors like the industrials and the healthcare sector very close to going back into bull markets. It's going to be very difficult not to get a Santa rally at this point. We would need to see very sharp declines with high volume selling, and we would need to start slicing through very critical support levels. If we don't see price action slicing through critical support, you are more than likely going to get the Santa Claus rally. A lot of big money is about to go on holiday and they want to get those big bonuses and they're not going to dump the market just because you're getting nervous. They're very methodical and they position accordingly and if you don't see high volume selling, that means they're not exiting their positions. So follow the price action at critical support and pay attention to volume. If you get high volume selling slicing through support, then we're not getting the Santa Claus rally and we're going for that full blown correction. We'll know very soon, but right now it looks like the bulls are taking over and the bulls have all of the advantage right now because the price action is above all of the critical support levels. You can see how quickly the bulls won over control from the bears and it only took about three days of bullish price action. So right now the bulls are in full control, so stay bullish and don't forget we're still in a macro level bull market. You have to be bullish in a bull market if you want to win the majority of your trades because the bias and the path of least resistance is still higher at this time. Also, don't forget that I have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm driven alert service that sends all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message and only trades the ETF TQQ. I still have that Black Friday deal for 67% off your first month of Bank Trade Alerts, so now is the best time to be a bank member. You can find out how to get the discount code and how to join Bank Trade Alerts by clicking on the link in the description below.
I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this volatile market and stay on the right side of the trade. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.